Lorsque vous parlez avec un natif américain, ce n'est pas du tout facile de les comprendre parce que la façon dont nous prononçons les mots n'est pas du tout la façon dont ils les prononcent. Et en plus de ça, ils utilisent des expressions idiomatiques qui rendent la conversation extrêmement difficile à comprendre. Et le dernier niveau, c'est quoi Des expressions en argot c'est pourquoi aujourd'hui, j'ai supplié notre petit Américain de venir nous démêler et démystifier l'argot américain. On va voir des expressions en argot aujourd'hui. Sortez vos carnets de notes, ça ne va pas être facile. <rire> Hello everybody, it's Coach Joe, your English coach. And it's Harley. All right. So, today we have our... Harvard professor <laughs> Cody, he is going to explain to us what some of the slang words we hear on social media or TV really, really mean. So Cody, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. All right. So without further ado, let's get started and you can take this. So the first one, the first slang word that we've been hearing a lot of is res. <rire> Peut-être que vous n'avez pas entendu parler de res parce que vous n'êtes pas sur les réseaux sociaux, mais dès que vous rentrez dans Insta ou Facebook, vous allez voir des gens, des Américains, dire res. Ça veut dire quoi exactement? Cody, what does res mean? I hear this all the time and I see it on Instagram. Res means when you have charisma. Like, you can smooth talk. You're a smooth talker. Oh, so res, you say when you have what? You're, you're a smooth talker. But charisma. Chariz, charisma. Oh, okay, so res is the res of charisma. Yeah. <laughs> It's like when you can attract people. When, okay, so, so naturally, you naturally attract people with your res. Yeah. Okay, so saying to somebody that they have res means that they're likable, they're easygoing, they have a, uh, an attractive personality. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, you hear it. All right, you heard that from the American, okay? Riz is charisma. So next time you see Riz, you understand what it means. These words and expressions that we're teaching you are not necessarily meant for you to start using, okay? Ces mots, ce n'est pas nécessairement pour que vous commenciez à les utiliser. Mais c'est pour que vous sachiez ce que ça veut dire. Comme ça, lorsque quelqu'un va les utiliser, tout de suite vous vous dites, ah, Coach Kojo nous a appris cela. Ou Coach Cody nous a appris cela. All right? Next. To gas someone up. Cody, have you heard of this? To gas someone up? Yeah. <laughs> of course. So, what does that mean? Can you just take it away and explain it? To gas someone up is to pump someone up. To make them feel good. Like someone has done something mm. like and they're sad, but mm -hmm. then you tell them some good things to make it better. So to gas someone up is to make them feel good about something. Yeah, and you pump them up. To pump them up, to give them good energy. Yeah. Okay, to give them good energy. What context, for example, what kind of example can we use to gas someone up? Is it, is it necessarily a good thing or it can be a bad thing? It can be a bad thing or a good thing. Yeah. So, for example, let's say that you don't really play soccer that well. And, but then I'm, you know, like I'm over there saying, yo, Cody, you play like messy. This is crazy. So I'm gassing you up, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can you think of something else? Like Cody? you steal from a store. And then your friend gasses you up. By saying what, for example? By saying, like, you, you finished that store. You, you finished. ate it. You, <laughs> you ate that up. Okay. So it's, it's actually not a good thing to steal, but your friends are making it seem like it's a good thing. Yeah. So that is not a good thing. Yeah. All right. So, so to gas someone up can be good or it can be bad. All right, but most of the time, it's not good to gas somebody up. Just tell them exactly the truth, and that's all. All right, so 
Let's say that you are gassing somebody up and then they're like, for real? Like, really? You think I'm good? You think I play like, like messy? And you, and you say, on oh God, you play like Messi. Uh, or you say, no cap. Or you say, no cap, you play like Messi. What does that mean? On oh God, you play like Messi, Cody. Oh like, my God, you ate that up. You swear it's so hot. You <laughs> swear you're not lying. Like, on oh God. Okay, so, um, so on oh God means you... Like you swear on God. Like for real. Yeah, like so for real. Like, like believe me. Believe, okay, so on God means believe me, I'm not lying to you, you play like Messi. All right, so if I'm gassing him up and I say on God, that means I'm swearing, okay, I swear to God. You will also hear no cap. It's the same exact thing, all right? Cap means, cap means lying and no cap means no lying. Oh, okay, so cap, means lie, so no cap, that means no lie. So sometimes people will say no lie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ah, vraiment, est-ce qu'on va s'en sortir avec l'accent américain ou l'anglais américain? Écoutez, si vous avez des soucis avec l'anglais et que ça fait des années, vous essayez de l'apprendre, ça ne rentre pas, ça ne pénètre pas. Ne vous inquiétez pas. Nous avons un programme d'immersion anglaise sur mesure pour les francophones comme vous. Nous avons déjà aidé des milliers de francophones dans plus de 50 pays du monde à parler couramment l'anglais aujourd'hui. Si vous êtes intéressé, dans la barre de description de cette vidéo, juste en bas, il y a un lien. Remplissez ce lien et moi-même, je vais vous contacter pour vous en dire plus. Ok? Alright, so the next one, donc j'ai déjà écrit le T. Take. C'est un verbe. To take. Un L. What? <rire> Des fois, ça n'a même pas de sens. La vaste majorité du temps, ça n'a pas de sens. Take an L. What does that mean, Cody? Break this down for us. Take an L means take a loss. Okay. And if someone says take a loss to you, it could be like you were in... You a... failed something, for example. Yeah, like you were in a race and you fell and the people got ahead of you. And then, you, and then you're going to be like, Oh, he took a loss. Uh, he, he took, took an L. L. OK. All right. Donc, il a essayé de vous expliquer. Je ne sais pas si vous avez compris. Mais L, c'est pour loss. Lose, c'est perdre quelque chose, n'est-ce pas? Donc, to take an L means to lose something. OK? To, to fail something. And, and so, for example, you can say, oh, man, you know, did you hear about Kanye's latest album? He took an L. That album fell flat. It did not sell, right? I'm not. I'm just using an example. Don't say, "Oh, Kanye's album was." It's just an example, okay? If you say somebody took an L, that means whatever they did did not succeed. It was a loss, okay? Don't you see? See, it was a loss to take an L. Make sense? All right. Very good. One, two, three, four. Let's say that um, you told somebody, "Oh man, you took an L." And then the person's like, nah, that was, that was great. You're just salty. Yeah. <laughs> what if the person say, man, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. That you're just salty. What does that mean? So salty, it means you can't accept something that <laughs> happened. And you're, just, and you're just a hater. Yeah, you're just a hater. <laughs> like, you're t if you're salty, you'll tell someone you took a L even if they did great yeah. because you're salty. Exactly. So being salty simply means, you can go behind me, being salty simply means, you know, like hating on someone. If you're hating on someone, you're just salty, okay? <laughs> salty, vous voyez cette expression, ça n'a même pas de sens. Mais bon, vous voyez que boire de l'eau, qui, qui est salé, si on ne fait pas une bonne chose, n'est-ce pas? Et donc, c'est amer, c'est un goût amer. Donc, vous êtes amer tout simplement. You're salty. Donc, maintenant, vous voyez que ça a un tout petit peu de sens, n'est-ce pas? All right, so, ERA is another one that we hear a lot on social media. For example, they'll be like, ooh, I'm on my good energy ERA, or you on your nice drip ERA, look at your drip. All right, <laughs> so drip is l'habillement, le style, okay? You know, nice drip ERA, positive vibe ERA, or whatever. 
What does that mean, Cody? Era. What does that mean? Era is a part of time where something happens. Yeah, normally that's what it means. Yeah, so you can have an era where you fly. Yeah. Like in what, that what does that mean to be fly? Because that's another you slang have word. Okay, but what does that mean to be fly? To look good, right? Yeah, to look okay. good. All right, so that's your look good era. Yeah, you look good for that period of time. Exactly, and the period of time can be one day, it can be a week, it can be a month, okay? In this particular instance, it can be whatever you choose it to be. All right, very good. Uh, anything else you want to add to that or we move to the next one? <clears throat> Let's move to the next All right. Let's say that you're supposed to go to a concert and then you overslept and you didn't realize that, oh my God, like you overslept and you got up and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I missed that concert. I'm big mad about this. What does that mean? <laughs> big mad. So you have mad. You what? Wait, do you hear the stages? This is one of the stages of mad. Yeah. You have mad, you have really mad, you have extremely mad. Then you have big mad. <laughs> okay, so you have different stages of mad. You're mad, you're kind of mad, you're extremely mad, and you're big mad. All right, so big mad is the latest stage of being mad, right? Yeah. All right, being mad is being angry, okay? Yeah, like when I beat my friend in Bad Wars, the game where you, you need to sword fight and you need to shoot them with the crossbows, he, this guy was so salty and he was big mad. <laughs> what game was that? In Bed Wars. Bed Wars? Yeah, you need to break people. Bed Worms or Bed Wars? Bed Wars. How, and how, how do you spell it? Bad? B E D W A R S. A R A R S? Yeah. Oh, Bed Wars. Yeah, you. Bed Wars. Yeah. Bed, this is war. You destroy people's bed so they can't respawn after you kill them. Interesting. Yeah, you need to take their bed away so they won't be able to respawn at home. <laughs> got it. All right, so people get big mad. Yeah. Oh, again. Okay, gotcha. All right, so j'espère que vous avez compris. Encore une fois, s'il vous plaît, ne commencez pas à utiliser ces expressions argot parce que non seulement c'est des expressions qui s'utilisent de façon informelle, donc ce n'est pas au travail, mais également si vous commencez à apprendre l'anglais, ce n'est pas sur quoi il faut vous attarder. Nous, nous vous enseignons ceci afin que vous soyez, afin, so that you can be aware of them, okay? If you're not aware of them, when you hear somebody say it, you're not going to know what it means. So our job here is to help you understand English, whether it's formal English or informal English, all right? Very good. So let's say that you are, let's say that you are doing something or you're saying something and somebody is like, oh, Cody, that's cringe. <laughs> that, that's cringe. Don't do that. What does that mean? Cringe means like it's so weird. It looks weird. It's like. When, it is way out there. Yeah, like, like, and it's making people uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, and like when you do a TikTok dance and it looks ugly. Yeah, ugly like or odd. Yeah, like the TikTok dance fell off already and you're still doing it. So that's cringe? Yeah, and okay. it's not good. So cringe simply means it's not good, stop it, don't do it. It's making me and us uncomfortable, including yourself who's doing it. So cringe. Don't do it, okay? Cringe is totally negative. Like this one, when we say uh, to gas someone up, it can be positive in certain circumstances or negative. This one is super negative, okay? So don't do it. Don't, wh whatever somebody says is cringe, they mean it's not good. Now, I'm not saying that they're right, but I'm simply saying they're saying whatever you're doing is not good, okay? I have something to add. Yeah, of course. If someone says, I'm cringing, it doesn't mean they're doing the cringe. It means they're feeling the effect of the cringe. <laughs> that, that was good, that was good. Okay, I'm cringing. I'm cringing, that means I'm cringing at what you're doing. That means what you're doing is cringe and it's making me uncomfortable. On the other hand, if somebody says what you, ooh, that's on fleek, Cody. That's on fleek. What does that mean? It's like fire. It's that is great. fire. <laughs> so on fleek means that's fire. 
Okay, so that's another expression actually. So you will hear people say that's that's fire. That but this one you've heard it, right? Because sometimes you use fire emojis to say something. So it is the same thing as on fleek. That means it's nice. In what circumstance can we use on fleek? Can you give us an example? When you're dancing, for example. Oh yeah, when you're dancing and you have great dance moves, like uh, and I'm like, ooh, that, no, that's not a good dance. <laughs> what kind of dance is that? So I'm like, ooh, Cody, that dance is on fleet. That means that dance is fire, okay? It's not cringe, all right? Good job. I think, I think, listen, if you have other slang words that you've heard or seen somewhere, put them in the comments and we'll go in there and we'll help you understand them, right? Yeah. We will read the comments, we'll help you understand them. Now, if you're still a beginner and you're struggling to think in English and every single thing you wanna say, you have to translate literally from French to English, then watch this video to learn how to start thinking in English. All right, everybody, it's Coach Joe, your English coach, and it's Code. All right, we'll see you guys next time. See ya.